positive but moving on up next is Oves Yaqub taking on Moklis Mohammed and for the final introductions let's go inside the cage to El Boche Jared Kyle uh, ladies and gentlemen make some noise for Oves Yaqub Oves Yaqub the first one from Kashmir is once again back at Matrix Fight Night. Arjun, Oves Yaqub bhi MFN Contenders 2022 ke sanatak hain. We saw him competing at MFN Contenders. He backed the contract from there. Came at MFN. Yaqub taking on Azim Mowgli's of Afghanistan. I'm going to say Pakistan because our bantamweight champion is from Pakistan and I'm waiting for him to defend his title. That's true. I was just going to say, you're confused with cricket for a second. Absolutely not, Arjun. Our bantamweight champion is from Pakistan. Over to Jared. 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 Representing Afghanistan, Mohammad Azim Moklis is making his MFN debut tonight. We have seen him active in the local circuit, wherein he stands officially with three wins and one loss. Training out of Team Relentless in Bombay tonight, he's here making his debut against Oves Yaqub in the lightweight division. I think he was an alumni of the MFN contenders in 2022 as well. And he's, you know, a, a mixed record is an interesting journey for a fighter because he's experienced victories, experienced oh, losses, and that makes you a very well, well-rounded, conditioned athlete. It's going to be an interesting technical grappling fight because both these men come in with a grappling background. He's training with a lot of Afghani fighters, and a lot of Afghani fighters have a very well-rounded grappling game. They're strong submissions, strong wrestling, and both wrestlers clashing with one another makes this a grappler's dream. Well, yes, you know, Arjun, I know you've been doing this for years and years. And in fact, the, the, the early start of MMA in the country was one-dimensional fighters taking on other one-dimensional fighters. However, times have changed. And nowadays, we get to see a lot of full-rounded fighters. And, and you know, always Yaqub as well as Azim Mowgli is one of them. Now, these fighters have the long gone are the single discipline fighters, eras. But that being said, a lot of fighters are very well rounded. And Mohamed Mokli is here. He's going to use his strikes to set up his takedowns. He needs to use the fake movement. Watch out for the initial shot. Fake level changes and look to take this fight to the ground. Basically, like we said, this fight can go anywhere. It's mixed martial arts. Be ready for any possibility. Where it comes striking, grappling, jiu-jitsu, whatever. He needs to stay calm, stay patient, look for his opportunities and take it to his advantage.
Okri is at the fighter prep point, just paying his respects before he enters the cage. It's such a big deal for so many fighters to be fighting at Matrix Fight Night because of the opportunities it provides them, because of the opportunities it gives them, the visibility it gives them. I mean, Matrix Fight Night is aired on Hotstar, which is seen by millions of Indians across the country, and it's streamed abroad on various channels as well. So the pressure on these fighters is incredible to perform in front of their fans. So many fans have come and to see him specially. Well, Arjun, it's always electric to witness India versus Afghanistan in Delhi, in the fight capital, because we see a lot of Afghani fans supporting the local fighters. And I think that's what makes MMA excellent. I think India versus Afghanistan has become a, even a very good topic in cricket as well, because the Afghani team has become very, very strong. And it's going to be interesting to see how this fight pans out. चलिए देखते हैं टेल ऑफ द टेप ये है लाइटवेट बाउट जहां पे हमारे पास ब्लू कॉर्नर में है 25 वर्षीय ओवेस याकूब और इनके विरुद्ध में है अफगानिस्तान के अजीम मोकलीज यहां पे हाइट एडवांटेज 10 सेंटीमीटर की अजीम मोकलीज को चलिए चलते हैं जारट की तरफ लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन फर्स्ट वी इंट्रोड्यूस the blue corner he weighed in at 70 kilograms representing kashmir and fighting out of warriors cove give it up for a wave yako and his opponent fighting out of the red corner he weighed in at 69.40 kilograms representing Afghanistan and fighting out of team relentless make some noise for Mohammad Azim Mokles well, ladies and gentlemen the referee for the fight Jim Perdias All right gentlemen we've been over the rules protect yourself at all times obey my commands at all times touch gloves step back let's do it stirring as we hear the support for both the hometown boy and the Afghani fighter it's going to be interesting to see if this is going to be a battle of grappling skills or we're going to see something different entirely immediately what jumps off the page is the height advantage of Azim Mokhlis अर्जुन बहुत मायने रखती है जब आपके पास 10 सेंटीमीटर की हाइट और रीच एडवांटेज हो बिकॉज आपकी उसकी वजह से किकिंग रेंज और स्ट्राइकिंग रेंज पूरी बढ़ जाती है यू कैन थ्रो लॉन्ग शॉट्स एंड यू कैन डू अ लॉट ऑफ डैमेज टू द ओपोनेंट फ्रॉम अ डिस्टेंस और आल्सो बिकम्स इंटरेस्टिंग इज दैट व्हेन यू आर टॉलर योर आर्म्स आर लॉन्गर सो व्हेन यू डिफेंड द टेक डाउन यू योर योर आर्म्स कैन डिग डीपर इन अंडर हुक्स एंड हैज बेटर कंट्रोल इन दैट सेंस बट ऑन द सेम हैंड अ लॉट ऑफ शॉर्टर फाइटर्स can get inside range because when you punch traditionally you punch in a straight line you don't punch downwards so if you're not of the same height your punches will go above the head of a shorter fighter this is very evident the way mike tyson fought in his prime he always fought fighters that were much taller than him but that didn't stop him and always yakub realizes this and will not let that stop oh. him either that's nice jumping knee there return fire by moklis But yes, he should be looking to land those leg kicks because he can stay out of striking range of Oves Yakub. Well, I've seen Oves fighting in the local circuit, especially at the amateur level, and I and I know that this gentleman has an excellent grappling skills. So maybe there he's trying to set in up a takedown. No, he's doing something excellent. He's not spamming takedowns, showing his hand from the get-go. He's going to look to chain his strikes. He's going to catch him in a moment where he's off balance and off position, and then look to lock up a takedown. Because right now he respects the fact that his opponent is a solid striker, a solid grappler, and with a wide stance as such, he cannot lean in for that for that shot because he's got the range, he's got the timing down. So far, he has to work his he has to work his range. He's going to work his timing in, and then David look to get out. Look at that! Look at the way. 
uh, look at the way Azim looks to extend that deep kick. The deep kick is traditionally used, was usually used in Muay Thai to create separation between opponents, but in modern MMA, it's, it's such a great tool to land to the body, not only for damage, but it's a great range finder. It keeps your opponent away. Both these fighters have had challenging times in their career, in their life, to be finally here fighting pro at Matrix Fight Night. Oh! Oh! Big shot! Now it's going to get, here we go. Now it's come the grappling exchanges. He cracked him, dropped him. Big elbows here. He's trying to lock up the legs. He's got an underhook on the right hand side. Yakup is going to try and he's got a body lock here. Well, that was excellent recovery by Owes Yakup. Both these guys back onto their feet now. It's just these grapplers have such tenacity and strength and their recovery is incredible. Now, Azim trying to get an underhook on the right hand side. He's just trying to muscle his way through here. Beautiful technique. He lifts his... his he's got that underhook on the right hand side. He's going to look to turn his hips, but his... But Yakub's hands are still locked behind him. He's clasped it, he's got a body lock. But he's sneaking his arm through and he's going to look to turn his hips outward. Turn around and push the pressure across him. Yakub doing a very good job of stepping outwards with his left and looking to put his right leg across him. Trying to hook his rear leg and trip him and turn to his right hand side. Nice knee there by Azim. Jim Perdios watching on, waiting for activity here because you know he's going to separate them if he doesn't see too much activity. Very nice underhook there again by Azim. He's got, as long as he's got that underhook there, it's going to be very difficult for him to complete this takedown, even though his hands are clasped around the single, but his head is out of position here. We can hear Oes Yakub corner yelling, pull him up and go for a takedown. Azim Okli is throwing in those elbows from that position. Matra 10 seconds bache hain is round mein. बहुत ही एक्साइटिंग राउंड रहा है दोनों के बीच में इंटरेस्टिंग फाइट सो फार बट बट दैट्स व्हाट द जजेस आर गोइंग टू लुक एट दैट एस अ सेंस ऑफ अ मेजर ऑफ कंट्रोल बट नथिंग अचीव फ्रॉम दैट टेक डाउन अटेम्प्ट देयर द हाइलाइट ऑफ दिस राउंड इज स्टिल दैट नॉक डाउन बाय अजीम लेट्स टेक अ लुक एट सम ऑफ द हाइलाइट्स ऑफ राउंड नंबर 1 ग्रेट कंट्रोल ग्रेट स्टार्ट ऑफ द राउंड बाय याकूब बट इवेंचुअली अजीम केम फॉरवर्ड स्टार्टेड लैंडिंग एंड ही ड्रॉप्ड हिम विद अ ब्यूटीफुल जैब That was incredible. I think he was caught off balance more than anything else, rather than hurt. But tried to turn it around there, and great hips and sprawl shown by Azim. Just incredible action. Very technical bout here as we get ready for round number two. We've got Susuwan Ghosh cornering Azim Moklis. He's another legend of the sport. One of the veterans. One of the oldest fighters in the circus. Circuit oldest in terms of his experience, not by age. So Arjun, the last fight that Azim had at the local circuit, we saw him knocking the opponent out using the same jab. He knocked him down with a jab. I think it's more of the position that Yakub was in. Sometimes even a simple, precise strike can do a lot more damage than a swinging haymaker can. It's just about precision and timing, and that's what it was. He timed it perfectly and dropped him. But that would still that scores a lot of points in the eyes of the judges. Dusre round ki shuruat. What a fight night of fights we've had at Matrix Fight Night 14. Massive action all the way around, and we're seeing a great contest between these two warriors. Yakub taking on Azim Moklis in what is proving to be a very good technical affair and I like the way how Yakub is stepping forward now. He senses the urgency that he needs to switch to his grappling more than stand with him because he doesn't have a lot of success in the striking department. But at the same time, he needs to watch out. Can't let 
Azim take the center of the of the cage. Nice body kick by Yakub there a second ago. Azim looking to go upstairs with that oh. front kick. Very nice knee. See the amount of deeps he throws, the amount of front kicks that he's throwing out. He's always threatening, saying that if you change levels and come forward, he's going to catch him coming in. Well, that's also reach advantage display here by Azim Moklis because he's got a longer reach. He can throw in those shots and another one. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely! He's using that reach advantage very effectively. What concerns me is that Jakub is he needs to find a different approach. He, maybe he could look for a single because right now in the clinch position where he's allowing Azim to tie up with him and get under hooks on both sides, it's going to prove to be very difficult to take him down here, despite how strong Yakub is. He's trying to hook the leg and drag him to his right-hand side. There you go, he can look to sweep the leg from that position, very reminiscent of what Islam Makachev does. He's got an underhook on the right side. But the way Azim is controlling that wrist and hand on the other side, can't get a look of it. No, sorry, my correction. Oasis is controlling the wrist of Azim. He's doing a good job landing some knees to the body. Well, not effective as yet. He needs to take Azim down and Azim defending in an excellent manner here. Now, Azim is just proving to be a problem for Yakub right now. Because I don't know how the judges are going to score this fight. Because as of now, yes, it, you know, technical grappling is, is, a, is, a, is a chess game. You jockey for position constantly over and over again but it's it's after a point there are you know a lot of organizations deduct points for ineffective grappling as well because right now he's not advancing position he's holding him in place and you can see Azim that he's trying to squiggle out and Oasis is just trying his level best there you go oh. beautiful hook very nicely done hooks the leg and drags it straight to the ground Ove is controlling, this, controlling his opponent from this position, no. trying to throw in those short strikes he's, as well. He's in mount right now and it's revenge time, baby, because he's looking to posture up and land some heavy, heavy leather down. And he's got him pushed up against the cage in a very, very nice way. Well, this looks like Jakub's territory now. He's looking, oh! to, he's looking to tie up that hand, get free and land some big shots. Oh, nice shots there. Big, big shots landed. Both these guys on the feet once again. Good pressure by Jakub. Doing a very, very good job in the second round. Jakub relentlessly going for the takedown. Jakub again holding him up. Looking for his openings there. He's got his hands clasped around that single leg. But the overhooks, I thought the underhooks of uh, Azim, not allowing him to dig deeper. Good turn there. Again, lands a good knee to the body. Another one. Is it me or does Jakub look a little bit like Johnny Hendricks? <laughs> well, I like how you compare Indian MMA fighters <laughs> with all the ones in the UFC. Hey, I only compare them with legends. <laughs> <laughs> he does look like Johnny Hendricks, doesn't he? <laughs> Again, a lot. He needs to watch out for those elbows, though. Smartly switches his head to the other position. Oops. Incredible grappling being shown by Jakub here. Very, very high level. Less than 10 seconds to go. Oh! Heavy exchange. Try to break and land something significant on that exchange. As we come to a close of round number two, great technical grappling on display here. It's going to be interesting to see what happens as we move on to round three. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Round started off with Azim again taking the center, landing, trying to land some front kicks. But the minute, beautiful jab again there by Azim. But eventually, Jakub gets a hold of him and gets that beautiful outside trip. Takes him to the ground, got mount position and started landing some good ground and pound. Got back up and that was the end of the round when both of them separate. Great fighting, great technical fighting.
I think what Oves needs to do is change his game plan. He's just trying to go in for the takedown. And maybe he needs to go stand on his feet and strike. What do you have to say on this, Arjun? I mean, Oves had, um, Oves had a lot of success with the grappling and he's doing a, he's doing really well i think it's azim who actually needs to get some separation he's got the long he's got the longer reach he's got the distance he can he has the superior striking he dropped him with the jab earlier landed some good shots in round two as well nothing significant though i think he'd be looking to keep him off him get some distance and open up his striking a little more always though is going to look to take this to the ground and ground him out round number three begins now oh got the leg thrown in a shot very nice way Tito Odi style push him up against the cage <laughs> trying to land some ground and pound here it is man it is <laughs> our boys are looking so good Great top control from here, but good guard by Azim, not letting him posture up. He's got a hold of his head. Look at that, he's trying to get a, he's trying to pull his leg up, look for a triangle maybe. He needs to watch out for that triangle. He can't leave a hand, he's got both his hands in though. Yaha pe triangle ki koshish Azim dwara. Safalta nahi mili. No, Azim let it go immediately, he knew he didn't have that triangle here, he's in better position. But Arjun, you can use long reach here. As you told us in the beginning, there is a lot of benefit in long reach. In striking and grappling. We have seen a lot of fighters use their long reach. I remember Jason Solomon when he fought. He was taller and lankier and longer than so many of the other fighters. And he used that to his advantage over and over again. And the way you can see his top control is so heavy. बहुत ही अच्छा डिफेंस यहाँ पे अजीम द्वारा ओवेस के हेड को पिन कर रखा है कोशिश यही कर रहे हैं कि हेड ऊपर ना उठ पाए और ओवेस कुछ ना कर पाए और ओवेस यहाँ पे कोशिश करते हुए शॉट स्ट्राइक्स फेंक रहे हैं पूरी कोशिश यही है कि टॉप से डोमिनेट करें बट यहाँ पे हो सकता है कि एक सबमिशन अटेम्प्ट आ जाए अजीम द्वार Maybe that would be a Hail Mary submission if possible at this point. But look at that, he's trying for the triangle. He's trying to put it across, but the position, or he could be looking for Alma Plata if he can manage to switch his hips. Well, it's too difficult from uh, this point. If he pulls an Alma Plata, it's going to be the first one here at Matrix Fight Night. Sure. <laughs> the first one in a very, very long time that we've seen. Well, Azim comes in from a camp which is very heavy on their, on their grappling. You know, all of these guys are jujitsu jiu experts. We've got less than two and a half minutes into this round and I think Owens needs to realize that he needs to change his game plan. Get onto his feet and start trading shots. Always landing some good ground and pound here. Slowly grinding his opponent out. It may get a little bit tricky if it goes to the judges. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see Arjun how they scored this grappling domination by Owens. Is, it's not it's according to me it's it's if he can continue doing this without much resistance for the rest of the fight it's pretty much straightforward here passes guard now into half guard this third round has just been one round of incredible control by always and some good shots there you can hear them सही बोला अर्जुन बहुत ही अच्छा कंट्रोल का प्रदर्शन यहां पे ओवेस द्वारा पूरे फाइट में कोशिश यही रही ओवेस की कि वो पिन डाउन करके रखे अजीम को अजीम एकदम इनफेक्टिव अपनी ग्रैपलिंग के साथ बहुत कुछ करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं हालांकि कर कुछ नहीं पा रहे हैं और यहां पे पॉइंट्स बटोरते हुए ओवेस Stri uh, striking भी दिखा रहे हैं, थोड़ी बहुत striking कर रहे हैं, so that he scores those brownie no, points I mean, from the judges. The, the, he's done, accordingly, he's done enough to win a decision. He's got, he's had fantastic control in this round. He's had landed some good ground shots. Keep your hands in his chin. 
Well, that's some precious, priceless corner advice. That's some good advice, a very passionate corner for Waze here as we go into the last 30 seconds of this round. Absolute clinic been put on in the last two rounds by Waze. Oh! Nice technique, doesn't land a takedown though. Azim trying to land those elbows he's while... Got, he's got a beautiful body lock there, he's landing some good elbows from this position. And Azim trying to fight back with everything in his power though. But I think Oves has done more than enough to secure this win and bring it home in front of the hometown fans and crowd. Oh. <laughs> what an excellent fight between both these fighters. Uh, we heard a lot of corner talk in our broadcast this time. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you can decipher the difference between my voice and his corner voice. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the highlights. This round was easy peasy. He caught the leg, took him to the ground, and eventually, well, not eventually, he didn't let him back up. He controlled, always controlled the, the, the striking, the grappling, the top pressure, the control all the way through. He gave him no chance up until the end of the round. He landed some good strikes as well, pass guard. But it was absolutely all always in round number three. Always Yakub ke samartak. Yahan Noida Indoor Stadium mein. Well, it's, it's always electric to be here at Noida Indoor Stadium for Matrix Fight Night. You know, the crowd here is spectacular. It's absolutely fire here at Noida Indoor Stadium. We've got fans in attendance, beautiful ladies, the only women promoters in the world of MMA. Aisha Shroff and Krishna Shroff. Absolutely. After Shannon Knapp, these are the only two women promoters in the world. Well, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't name Shannon Knapp here. Because we've got Aisha Ma'am and Krishna as the only mother-daughter duo in the world of MMA. Right, that's beat fair, that that's now. Fair, that's Arjun, fair, that's beat fair. that with UFC or some other stuff. No, actually, that's Invicta, actually. <laughs> I know, but Invicta has been taken over by UFC now. Oh, really? Has been? Oh, well, that's a been different couple conversation. Of years now. That's a different conversation for another day. You, you surely don't follow WMMA. Oh, I do. I love <laughs> WMMA, man. Me too, I mean, man. I love the women's fights. In fact, I've been talking about how much more the promoters want to push women's MMA, perhaps even do an all-female card one day. Well, be yes. interesting. Let's go over to Jared and make it official. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Ben scored the bout 29-28. Judge Manas and Rupendra scored the bout 29-28 for your winner by unanimous decision. From the blue corner, always your...